Okay, I'm back, and uh, we're going to start now. Um, we've talked about mounting hard drives. Now, suppose we have a CD like this guy. Okay, we put that into our machine. Whoops, we attempt to if it doesn't knock off everything on top of the machine. But we'll put that into our machine here. And now, what happens at this point is sometimes, depending on your distribution, it may just mount automatically, because many distributions will look at things and then mount. Other times, you've got to mount it yourself. There's various mount commands that you can use. I just had something pop up here. Oh, here it says available devices. I could mount that there. Um, Another way of mounting this device is um, if I went into one of these graphical guys, um, like I'd use on Windows, it will tell me someplace here that I've got a CD, I think. Um, uh, this is the guy, I believe. And if I click on that, that would mount the device. And that's the way I've gotten lazy. Nowadays, that's the way I mount many of my devices. I can mount either hard drives or um, uh, CDs or, or um, uh, flash drives that way. Um, uh, but if I want to do it from a command line, what I would do is I'd type in a command like mount space um, um, minus T. ISO 9660. Now, I might have to put in the div the type of device, and I might get away with the output in the minus T my, uh, 9660. I would probably then put in a minus O space. This is a read-only device, so I'll put in read-only. Uh, if I didn't put that in, I think it will mount anyway, but I'll probably get a little warning message. And then I put in the name of my device. Uh oh. Uh, um, maybe that's DVD. Let's try DVD. And then I will put in the uh, place I want that mounted. I often put a DVD or a CD ROM right up at the top um, uh, of my root uh, as a mount point for these. I don't have one here. Let's mount it here on uh, slash MMT. And guess what? We look at the bottom line on the screen there. It says, I've got a device mounted. It's 100% full. Um, actually, uh, DVDs and CDs will always be 100% full, even though this one only has uh, 62 megabytes used. But, since re uh, but there's no room to, for writing since they're a read-only device. So, And there's a lot of junk in there. So. Um, now, let's take this guy off. Let's U-mount this um, um, MMT. And guess what? It's gone. OK. Um, now, that's sometimes a pain to mount things when they're, you know, when I have to put it, when I have a physical device. CDs, I often just keep clusters of the CD images on the computer. And uh, which I, I capture by using um, um, ODD or one of the one of the GUI things like uh, um, K3B, and I capture the image and I will store the image in a location over here like um, media slash backups s. CD image. And I see I've got a lot of CD images there. Um, so I ought to be able to mount that guy directly, a CD image directly, with a mount command looking something like something like this here. Only, of course, I will mount a mount. Um, the device is going to be what? Media? Uh, um, that big long thing, thank heavens for the tab character. Um, backups. Um, C, 
CD image. And I think I've got a guy here called irrigation or something like that. Irrigation ISO image. Okay. Now, and then I've got to mount that. I'm going to mount that with my uh, CD um, MMT once again. I, I will mount that location there. Um, uh, okay. If I type a carriage return now, well, let's do it. I get an error message. I don't get an error message. It mounted. Well, no, uh, in, in, uh, that used to give me an error message because actually what you should do, and I, I think the book probably does this, is as one of your options here, of course, now I'll get an error message because this is typed in. So let's let's forget that. Let's U mount CD um, MMT. Let's go back here. The proper way to type this command in is just as it's typed here. Only I should put an O and I should put a loop uh, option because when you read a file that is um, an ISO image that is on your file system, it can't quite read that directly. And it's got to read that through a special file, which we call a loop file. And there are, um, and if you put in the loop option, it will assign a special file from slash dev um, that is a loop file. Um, in order to do your reading. I think there's loop 1, loop 2, loop 3. Uh, there's a mess of special files down in slash etc that have to do with this usage. And um, if you do that, you get this. And um, and there you are here. And actually, you even saw from before that this assigned loop uh, slash dev slash loop to be the device for that uh, special uh, for that uh, ISO image. Um, in the past, you actually had to put the loop in the mount command, or it would not mount properly. Uh, apparently, that's been a little change in the last revision or so of of um, of SUSE at least. I don't know if that's true on all distributions or not. Um, not yet, probably, but um, um, surprises. OK. Um, and then, of course, we could read um, oops, MMT. And you see, we've got some uh, uh, a directory there called irrigation. And under irrigation, we've got some uh, things like this. Let's go over to where I am uh, me. And let's do. Um, Let's read this guy with acro read slash MMT slash irrigation slash my irrigation um, um, PDF. And that should bring up a PDF file for me, which has something to do with. Um, the design of an irrigation system and my backyard. Do you have enough water? Um, yes, I have enough water because I drilled up well last year. Um, that's an expensive undertaking. Um, but um, OK. So with that, Let's you mount our file system. Now, that's kind of cool. Now, as I recall, if I go back to my um, thing here, as I recall, oh, I should mention also what you can do is um, <coughs> you can mount um, the, that disk image you mount, uh, uh, that file that was mounted, that was an ISO image, 
could actually be a hard disk image. Um, and I will actually go into that in a little more detail, I think, a little later. But, um, but that could actually be something like an ext4 file system that is just all kept in a file, kind of like a virtual disk, uh, like with the virtualization packages. And you mount that thing, and you can use it um, like a file system. It doesn't actually have to be an ISO 9660 file system, although that's what we use 90% of the time when our file systems are sitting on hard drive. Well, that's a lie. I, I guess nowadays that we use virtualization more, that's not quite as much true as that, as that used to be. Um, the other thing you can do with file systems, and I'm not going to do this here because it's kind of beyond our scope at the moment and our time allocation, but you can um, mount file systems over a network. Um, from a Unix network, you'll probably use a system called NFS, which stands for Network File Service or Network File System. From a Windows network, if you mount your file system onto a Linux machine, you'll be using a protocol called SMB. And I don't know what that stands for. OK. Um, Let's see what I've got time-wise here. I let's. Um, I'm just thinking here. Okay, let's um, uh, take a break here and end this video right here, and then we'll be back. <laughs>